Hi, in order to give you as much time as possible to work with your groups, I want to talk about the research project in a video. So let's get started. This is what we're going to cover. How do we join a research conversation? How do we narrow our topic? How do we build an argument? And when is everything due? Now, before we get into all of that, I want to emphasize a few things. First of all, this project is not a report in which you just review some random things that other people have said and then give your opinion at the end. Instead, this is a well-developed, cohesive essay. The goal of this research project is to learn something new, not to try and prove what you already think. Now, if you confirm with your research what you already thought, more or less, that's fine. But the research, let the research guide you rather than the other way around. Once you write your essay, you're going to have a clear thesis. That'll be at the end of the introduction. It's going to make a claim. The rest of the essay is going to develop that claim using your evidence, lots of examples, and um, to form reasons how you came to that conclusion. Now, Teresa Tony said that academic writers respond to what others have said. That's what you need to do. You need to find something specific that is going on in the world or something specific an author has said. And then you add to it. For example, if you're in the class that's discussing um, what do Americans need to know, you know that Eric Liu is responding what, to what E.D. Hirsch said. He reviews specific things that E.D. Hirsch said, and then he makes his own claim. If you were in my other class, then you're going to in some way choose something very specific that Baron and Grimm said, and then you're going to add to it. You've got to think, what specific idea do you plan on adding to? Now you've chosen your topic already. Hopefully you chose something that was intriguing that presented some problematic situations, some things that you were concerned about, because those are the things that will keep you going in research, that will interest you, hopefully, into what you wanna know. Now, how do you add to what someone has said? There are multiple ways to do this. Here are some basic ones. You can agree, disagree, or agree and disagree. Agreement might look like this. Author says X. Yes, this is true. I agree. Here are some additional examples. Now your thesis wouldn't be that simplistic. However, that's the basic idea. This could work quite well if you had an older article that the author provided evidence for, and you provided some new examples that illustrated those that previous set of claims. You might also clarify, for example, author says these things, and here's what it really means, and here are some examples. Another way you can agree is to extend a set of claims. For example, you find a set of claims on colorblindness and they're focused on something in the workplace and you extend it and say, this is also true in education. You're still agreeing with the author, but you're extending it. You can also disagree. You may be able to complicate a set of claims by providing examples that illustrate how this is not always true or it's not true anymore. To agree and disagree is to say parts of what someone said 
is true, but other parts may not always be true. They're only true under certain circumstances. Again, you've got to start with something specific. Catherine Savini wrote an article titled, Looking for Trouble, Finding Your Way into a Writing Assignment. And she said that narrowing your topic, finding what you're going to write about has four basic steps. And she's called it looking for trouble. And she says, first you need to notice things. And then you need to articulate a problem and its details. Next, you pose fruitful questions. And finally, you identify what is at stake. Noticing is a little bit like this. You identify a particular word, a concept, an idea. I mean, it might be an image that you're looking at and it strikes you as surprising or the author says it over and over again. You might notice something about the title that jogs your mind and makes you think about new things. But as you're noticing, you're focusing on something that's concerning. There's no right or wrong when noticing. Um, she says, as you notice, take notes in the margins of your paper. Keep track on a separate paper, piece of paper because those are the things that you can reference later on. She says you should articulate the problem in its details. Um, you can juxtapose texts from the same genre or on the same topic next to each other. Identify tensions or contradictions or definitions. Identify the conflict between your own experiences and the theories offered in the text. Identify troubling assumptions underlying the central arguments. You can even notice something, a gap or something relevant that the text doesn't talk about. How do you get there? Well, you've got to do a lot of reading. You've got to do some general reading just to get a sense of where the conversations are going. And then when you find that thing that jogs your mind, that makes you concerned, that's where you begin digging into the research. As you're articulating the problem in its details, you might in your notes, describe what an author means in a particular sentence. And then rack your mind. What do you already know about the problem? What have you seen? What have you experienced? What have you read? Chances are, in this class, you've already read something similar, something that you could lean into. You could also describe what others have said about the problem from reading, from experiences even in some other classes. The next thing you wanna do is ask fruitful questions. Savini asks, what makes a question fruitful? She says, a question is fruitful if it leads you to discover new information or a new idea. Fruitful questions tend to ask, tend to begin with why or how or what, and they're not answered with a quick yes or no. So if you come up with a yes or no question that strikes you as fruitful, try adding a why or a how to it. I would add, to what extent is it true? Under what circumstances is it true? And then what are some other ways this manifests itself? Sometimes you might come up with a really great question but you realize that you're not gonna be able to answer it in a single semester. It's too complicated or you can't find enough research. In that case, you probably are gonna to wanna to develop a new, newer question, something that you can answer. Finally, Savini says, you should identify what's at stake. Why does this matter? To whom does it matter? Keep in mind, on your pricey, I've always been saying the so what is part of the argument. Now, 
read multiple perspectives, take notes, see where the conversation is going. This is your task initially, and then you dig into the research. Jones observes that many Americans tend to see argumentation in terms of pro-con arguments. And although she acknowledges that some pro and con arguments are valid, most of the time she says they erase nuance, they negate the local in particular and shut down the very purpose of having an argument, the possibility that you might change your mind, learn something new or solve a problem. She says that makes argumentation a shallow process. When all angles are not explored or fallacious or incorrect reasoning is used, we're left with ethically suspect public discussions that don't get at the roots of an issue or work towards solutions. I'm looking for thoughtful arguments that embrace nuance, that consider multiple points of view, and that offer logical analysis and support their points of view. That's what this paper will be. As always, stories matter. Find narratives that illustrate your claims. You might be able to use some of your own narratives or narratives from your family members. You might be able to find current news or historic narratives that illustrate your discussion. This is a research project. Make it matter. Now, there are some relevant due dates. Your annotated bibliography is due Thursday, November 12th. Your essay introduction is due Saturday, November 14, with peer review due on Wednesday, November 18. Your full rough draft is due Saturday, November 21st, with peer review due Wednesday, November 25th. This is the day before Thanksgiving. Your final draft is due November 5th. Now, one thing I want to note is if you want me to read your drafts, you should make an appointment to see me during my office hours. I won't be able to read all the drafts and get them back to you, but I'm happy to meet with you during my office hours and take a look at whatever you have. And that's all I've got. Be sure and fill out the reflection on this video and ask any questions you have about it in that reflection.